Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about fractions with common denominators, and I've nicknamed this skill friendly fractions because these are friendly things to work with. They're good because they have this common denominator. So I'm just going to make myself a little note here. These are friendly fractions. They're friendly because they have that common denominator. We have talked before about fractions and how they can be um, confusing if they don't have a common denominator, but we're going to work with it because these do have common denominator. Here's the rules to boil it down quite simply. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, you must have a common denominator in order to add them or subtract them. You're going to keep the bottom part because it's still out of the same number of possible parts and you're going to add or subtract the tops. Here's what it looks like. Let's just do an example. Let's say I have a negative 11 thirteenths plus 8 thirteenths. How many do I have? What does this actually mean? Well, I know that I'm adding thirteenths, so my total is going to be out of 13. I don't add the bottoms because I still need it out of 13. Well, how many do I have? I've got negative 11 plus 8. So then it just becomes a, an integer problem like we've dealt with before. So I have negative 11 plus 8. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the easy way and keep the sign of the larger absolute value. Okay, so that's the negative. So I know that it's negative 3 thirteenths. That's all there is to it. Okay, so that's basically how we go. We keep the bottoms and add or subtract the tops. When we come to mixed numbers, what I'm going to say about mixed numbers is sometimes I, I get um, hung up on these mixed numbers because I want to do negative 5 plus 3 and then I get kind of confused. So here's what I'm going to tell you to do. I'm going to tell you to convert these to improper fractions by using the C method. Multiply and then add. So I've got 7 times 5 plus 6 and that gives me equals 41 and I'm still going to be over 7. Okay, so I've got 41 over 7 and I know that it's negative so I've got negative 41 over 7 plus, and then I'm going to multiply these, 7 times 3 plus 2 gives me 21 plus 2 equals 23, still over 7. So my new problem becomes negative 41 over 7 plus 23 over 7. You see how that's much friendlier than trying to add these mixed numbers? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the 7 and now it becomes an issue where I'm adding two integers that have opposite signs. And this really equals 41 minus 23. I'm going to subtract the easy way. And so that gives me 18. And I'm going to keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is negative. So I have negative 18 over 7. I can convert it back then. How many times does 7 go into 18? It goes in two times. How many are left over? 4 sevens. It's important to remember that even though these were negatives, all of this is negative. Not just the five part, not just the six sevens part. All of it's negative. And so that's why I got the negative 41 over 7 and not something that was a mix between a negative and a positive. Then we move into this algebra part. Well, we have been adding these things before. We've been adding A's and B's and X's and C's and all those kinds of things. And so it's, it doesn't really matter because A is a number. So if A was 1, it would be negative 1 plus 7 ninths. Negative 1 ninth plus 7 ninths. It doesn't really matter because we're still going to have a common denominator. And we're going to add the tops. So I have negative A plus 7A. So I have two opposite signs, and I'm adding, so I'm going to subtract the easy way. And I'm going to keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is 7a, so it's going to be 6a over 9. Now, you're thinking to yourself, 
Normally, if it was just six ninths, I could reduce it. You can still reduce it because really, remember, this is two times three times a over three times three. Cross out some of these threes, I get two a over three. That's all there is to it. See if you can do b on your own. b is on your own, and remember, we're going to have elevenths. What's going to be on the top? Then ask yourself, can I reduce this? One more example. Negative 2b over 5 plus 12b over 5. I'm adding fractions once again. Keep that common denominator of 5. And then I have negative 2b plus 12b is going to give me, once again, two opposite signs, integer operations. So 12b minus 2b, subtract the easy way, keep the sign of that larger absolute value. So it's going to be 10b over 5. You're thinking to yourself, oh yeah, 10 is 2 times 5. That's good. Cross out that 5, you get 2b. That's all there is to it. See what you can do with letter b here. Here's four more examples for you to try. See if you can do these on your own as well as extra practice. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.